Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today's video shows you a technique that uses designer series paper to make quick cards. Now I wanna give a shout out to Robin Armbrecht who has a blog, Really Robin Stamps, and I saw her uh, video um, on patchwork stack and cut. I'm gonna change my name up a little bit and call it the stack cut and shuffle technique and you'll see why. So on this one, I'm using a current paper. It was in our holiday mini last year and it has been carried over to this holiday mini. And I love the traditional colors, the real red, the mossy meadow and the old olive for Christmas. And they all coordinate so well together with the those the color combinations. You know how you'll have certain designer series papers that throw in like purple, with other colors that just don't seem to go, but all of these really go well together. Now this makes four super quick cards. As you can see, I used another carryover. It's in our annual catalog and it's the perfectly plaid. I know a lot of you guys have this with the uh, tree punch that goes with it. So it makes quick, quick stamping and punching out some little red rhinestones here. I used a real red two and a quarter inch circle punch and then I did a two inch white circle and then I just took it through my embossing folder with the tasteful textiles. And then I used my classic label punch for the Merry Christmas. Now this Merry Christmas and it's the best time of the year comes from our Peaceful Deer stamp set that's current. So as you can see, I made all of these cards and they all have the same designer series paper. Let me show you how quick this is. Okay, so we're gonna set these aside a second. So what you're going to do is on these cards, now I'm gonna show you a different dimension on a different card because I'm gonna use a, um, a stamp set not this one, because you can kind of see what I've done here. But you're going to cut four pieces of designer series paper that, that coordinate well with each other. And you can see here, these ones all do. And so you're gonna have it, and it's gonna be four inches by five and a quarter. So you're gonna put that into your trimmer, and you're going to go over to the two and three quarters, and you're gonna cut it at two and three quarters. So now you're gonna have two and three quarters, and then I think it's one and a quarter here. Then you're gonna take this two and three quarters and oh, why don't I just do it? Okay, so now this is if you're making the set of cards I have there. So you're gonna take and put your four inch side up at two and three quarters. You're gonna cut them all at the same time. So you're going to give some good pressure on your trimmer and then make sure it's cut the whole way through. Now you have these two pieces here. And then we're gonna cut down two inches on this one and a quarter inch side. Make sure they're all together. And you're going to, and you really wanna make sure they're all together. And you're gonna put it at two inches and cut down, make sure it's cut the whole way through. And then you're gonna take this two and three quarter inch one and you're gonna cut down at three inches. Okay, so now we're gonna do three inches. Make sure I've gone the whole way through, and I have. Okay, now we wanna get this out of the trimmer without upsetting the whole apple cart here. Whoop. Now one thing is those kind of flip down there, so I wanna actually make sure that they're all in order. Okay. So now you have these pieces here that we cut. Now these pieces are all gonna work on this card, but I'm gonna show you those who are stacking them and cutting them. But on our next card, I wanted to bring the dimension down a little bit because I'm gonna be using our frosted gingerbread set. And because I'm using the gingerbread, I wanted to use our cinnamon cider. And since this doesn't have any cinnamon cider in it, I figured a white border around it would kind of separate the colors and look nice. So I'm actually going to bring this dimension, which was here, I want to bring that dimension down to three and three quarters by five so that I can put a one inch border around it. I mean, I can put a um, one eighth inch border around 
the hole outside, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm going to carefully move this over because now I can literally make four cards out of that. But we're gonna show you the actual shuffle technique on our new dimensions here. Okay, so we're putting that off, getting everything. Okay, so now we're working on our set of cards here, two and three quarters by five, okay? So I've got my four sheets that coordinate nicely together, and I'm gonna bring my trimmer out. So we're gonna bring the trimmer out, and what I had to do is I had to modify my measurements here. So I'm going to now, instead of the two and three quarters, I'm gonna to go to two and a half. Cut all four at the same time. So getting good pressure, and then going back over to make sure it got the whole way through. Okay, I'll see you right, okay, there we go. So on this piece here, I wanna come down one and three fourths. Okay, so I'm gonna go, keeping them all together, I'm gonna go one and three quarters. Keep them all together, don't move on me. One and three quarters. So one and three quarters. So now I have this measurement here and I have this measurement here. Now on the two and a half inch wide, I wanna come down, down to two and three quarters. Okay, two and three quarters. And all I did was bring a quarter inch off of the other dimensions because I knew I wanted to have that one eighth inch border. So now I have that piece and I have that piece. So now you know the beginning of that technique. We stacked our paper, then we cut our paper. Now we're gonna shuffle our paper. Thank you, Robin, for this idea. Okay, so we're gonna pull this over here and we're going to get our four designs done. Designs done. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're going to shuffle this piece under to the bottom of the deck one time. Then you're gonna take this one and you're gonna shuffle down two times, okay? Then you're gonna go to this one and you're gonna shuffle three times. One, two, three. There you've got one design. And what you're gonna do is put, you're gonna pick up this design and put on one card. Then you're gonna have the next design and put on another card until you've done all four. Okay, so we're gonna put these off to the side so that we don't mess them up. Okay, so let's see here. I made two landscape cards. Now all the materials I use and the measurements and the products, I have over on my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com, right under the YouTube description. You'll see, visit my blog here. Just press that link. It takes you right over to cindyleebdesigns.com and you'll see a, photos and additional tips that I have. Um, I'll have a picture of these measurements for you, but you can also see underneath the YouTube description, the measurements and the links to all the products uh, in my online store. So make sure you check that out. Okay, so we're gonna make two landscape cards and two portrait cards, okay? So our landscape card is going to be eight and a half by five and a half, and we're gonna score it at four and a quarter. So eight and a half, by five and a half, score at four and a quarter. Now, technically, we could have cut them all that way and made two of them this way and two of them this way, but I love to open a card this way. And when you're going to do that, you're gonna have 11 inches by four and a quarter, and you're gonna score it at five and a half. So 11, scored at five and a half on that 11 inch side, and four and a quarter, okay? So let us take a look at our, let's take a look at one of our I think I'm gonna try to do it. But like I said, I'm gonna use the frosted gingerbread on this card. And that's why I wanted to bring down the measurements of this, because I wanted to put that white around it to break up the cinnamon cider from the designer paper that doesn't have cinnamon cider in it. But I couldn't see making my gingerbread 
in a different color. Well, to be honest, I did make them in red and I just thought, no, I wanted them to be gingerbread. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're going to put these aside and we're gonna look at this one. Now, the first one I'm going to do is I brought and I made a portrait with my cinnamon cider and then I die cut this snowflake with our dies, our gingerbread dies, and I cut the cinnamon cider out of the outline and then I did a white for the detailed icing and then I just glued it on there. Now we're going to do, I'm gonna set this aside here a second, and now we're going to build up because as you can see, I really wanted to break up the cinnamon cider from the green. It seemed to clash, but yet, I, like I said, I really wanted the gingerbread. So what we're gonna do is put our first layer on here. So let me get some glue here. Actually, I just put some Tombow glue in this little applicator. So I'm gonna take my first one, and that's this pattern, and I'm gonna just put some glue on the back of it. Okay, and then I'm gonna start and put a one eighth inch border around for the top and the side. Then I'll take this next piece here, making sure I don't turn it, and you'll know that if you're turning it by, um, you don't, you'll see you wouldn't want that same color there. So then I just put, pop that one on so I have my border and then I go down to the, my next one. And remember not to, not to keep it the same. So we're gonna put some glue <clears throat> on there and we're going to excuse my cough. And then we're gonna put our last one on. I feel like that cough is going to <clears throat> be a lingering one. And of course it's because I'm making a video. <clears throat> so please excuse me. And then we're going to put our last pattern right in there. Okay, so then we're gonna layer this and you see how cool that looks with the cinnamon cider? It doesn't, um, it kind of brings together the, it just brings together the colors by separating them, if that makes sense. So we're going to pop, think of all the designer papers that really would lend itself well. And these are really super quick cards we can make here. Now I'm wondering if this is totally glued down here because I could actually, bring this one down a little bit. It's a little too, oh well, we'll just pretend I actually overlapped it a little bit and it's not perfect down here. Oh well, what are you gonna do? Maybe the next one I'll get it better. So let's put a little glue here, okay? And here, all right. This is just a little applicator. That, um, adhesive applicator, crafting applicator that you can use. It gives a nice um, small, and like that's bugging me that I'm off a little bit there. Okay, so anyhow. So then I'm gonna wanna put our little um, gingerbread snowflake there. So I'm just going to, oh, I'm gonna pop him up with dimensionals. What was I thinking? So I'm gonna pop this up with dimensionals and just put three of those on there. And then I hadn't quite decided what I want to, actually I have decided right now, I'm gonna throw on some of our red, real red ribbon. And this is the real red, what do they call this here? Sheer ribbon. Okay, I think this would, actually let's pop this off real quick and put some real red ribbon under this one. Two of the cards are gonna have some real red ribbon under them because it needs a little, cause I'm gonna put, let's, let's just put a little ribbon under there. So let's put another dimensional here. Dimensionals, there they are. Let's put another dimensional right there. 
And let's just have a little bit of flare there with our ribbon. And put, make sure that makes, kind of like it up towards there. I just, I'm, I have my dimensionals all wonky here. Let's just pull this dimensional off. Okay, making a video that should have been really short, a little longer. <laughs> oh well, no use in starting it all over again, right? Okay, so note to self, put the ribbon on first and then put your snowflake on, okay? And so we're gonna cover up our little blunder there. There we go. Just needed a little bit of pizzazz there with the ribbon because on the inside of this card, I stamped in Cinnamon Cider that same snowflake because you can actually stamp it and cut it out or you can just stamp it. So I did just stamp that and then I'm just going to put Okay, fingers work. Put a little bit of glue, fumbly fingers. Put a little glue in those corners and put that in the inside of our card. And we've carried over some red to the inside, but we've kept our true to our gingerbread color with the cinnamon cider. And we've got card number one. Now, let's set that one aside and let's look at this landscape one here. I mean, portrait size one here, okay? Um, ooh, I might have changed up my colors. Well, you know what? We are just gonna go on the fly here. Now, I wanna show you one that I'm going to make here, and this is using the bell. Now, I wanna show you how easy it is just to put that uh, little, here we go. There's our silicone mat. And just get a little bit of this glue on the little pieces of the icing that we die cut with those gingerbread dies. Okay, and then we'll just pop that right onto our cinnamon cider gingerbread cookie. Hold it down. Okay, and then we have to build, we're gonna be doing a, let's see, okay, we're gonna be putting a sentiment here, but we actually, you know what I just looked at here, I think that it's not gonna matter. Okay, so what we're gonna do is now build up our landscape card using our, I think what I did is, I just wanna, I went ahead and made them all this way that I turned them, okay. So we're just gonna build up this card and remember it started, oh no, what did I do? I started, okay, they just all have to be different. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. Okay, so we're gonna put this one up in that corner, okay. And it has to be the two and three quarters, right? I wanna make sure that I didn't mess this up here. So this is the two and three quarters, right? Two and three quarters, yes. Or two and a half. Okay, so we're gonna put that right in that corner. This really does go really fast, guys. I'm just fumbling around. And then we'll put this one And then we'll put our next one. And see how you just create that one eighth inch border the whole way around. And we're using a different pattern each time we go. I wanted to do this with the peach paper. I think it would work really well with this. And there, that worked perfectly. Okay, so now we're going to put this onto our landscape card. We could do it either way, this way or this way. I think I'm gonna do it that way. Get a little glue on the back of here. And then 
put that on our landscape card, get a nice 1 8 inch border the whole way around the card. Okay, and then we're gonna be putting our little bell on there, but I wanna stamp on here the sentiment that's in here, you're the icing to my gingerbread. So what I'm gonna do is get that stamp. Where's that stamp? Here it is. And we're gonna do it in Mossy Meadow because I know Mossy Meadow is on my stamp desk really waiting for this. Okay, so we're going to do, oh wait, I think I actually have, do I have this one done? Oh, I, okay, yes. We're gonna use Mossy Meadow and we're gonna stamp You're the icing to my gingerbread on, and I just used my, it looks like, yeah, it is sticking on there. Okay, you're the icing to my gingerbread, which I think it should be you're the icing on my gingerbread, but I wasn't in the room when it was designed, so I didn't get to tell them. Okay, so that's gonna go there on the card. So let's go ahead and adhere this sentiment here. And I just used a scrap of one inch. Okay, glue. I just used a scrap of one inch that I had and used my triple banner punch to put that pennant end on there. Okay, and then we're gonna pop up our little bell. There we go. And because we have a sentiment on the front, I'm not messing around with the ribbon on this one. The other one was just saying, I need a ribbon. So there we go, our second card. So one, two, set that aside. And then we're going to do another landscape here. And this is with the little ornament. And we're going to, what do we have here? The little ornament, and we're gonna build up that same thing. We're gonna start now with the green. And I'm telling you, if you weren't sitting here watching this with me, you would see how lickety split this goes, how fast it is once you, um, I got a little edge there, um, how fast this goes whenever you have these all cut. It goes really quick. Like I made those Christmas trees cards so fast. But then I decided, oh, I need to maybe show you something else to do. So I ended up creating something using another stamp set because I like to do that. So there we go, line that up and get it straight. There we go, and then our last one. You can put a rubber band around your glue if you wanna save yourself all that craziness and then this one goes this way and you pop that up against there and the nice thing about the white card the white panel behind it if you have any moving that's not perfect the white goes in really nice with all the other patterns and it just looks like it's supposed to be there okay so now we're just going to pop that onto the front of this card so Wow, we've got a lot of side of, um, whatchamacallit, uh, sound effects today. Okay, and then we just get a nice border that's straight because we're using glue, and you know how it is with glue. Little sanding block. These are actually nail filers. Found, a, found them in bulk on Amazon. And glue sets. You have wiggle room when you're putting it down, but once it sets, it sets. <laughs> okay, so this one also does not is not going to have a sentiment on it, so we're just gonna put a little bit of ribbon on it. So let's grab our ribbon. And this one, actually, I need to put a little piece of another piece of dimensional under it because it's sitting over there just popping up where it should not be. 
There we go. Okay, so we just want to put a little piece of ribbon underneath. So let's get a dimensional to do that. So let's have the red coming up on that green. Okay. So let's put a dimensional there. Let's put some ribbon on it. Okay, and then we'll put some dimensionals on the other side of it. There we go. And we're almost done with this, guys. And the reason why I didn't put the sentiment on these ones is because the sentiment, I really wanted to use the year the icing to my gingerbread, but it's a little too long to go across this way. So I just decided to put it on the inside. So on the inside of this one, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the ornament okay I'm actually going to stamp the sentiment first so that means I'm gonna to have to wipe off my we're gonna to have to wipe off with our simply chamois because I want to use red for my sentiment here so let's get some red ink on there, real red. You're the icing to my gingerbread. Over to the bottom left. And then we're gonna stamp our ornament. And we're gonna use cinnamon cider. And there's the ornament. And we're gonna get it inked up. These stamps really stamp nicely. They hold the ink very nicely. And we're just gonna put that right there hold it down try not to wiggle it do you ever get blurry edges it's kind of like when you kind of shake your block a little bit and that's what i really like about these thick blocks that stamping up has that has this groove here you, it gives you really good holding power when you're stamping so i love their blocks so this is going to go on to the inside of our card and i'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the corners because whenever you squiggle a lot of glue all over the back of here, believe me, it shows up because our cards go through a war <laughs> getting to us. And so when they go through those machines, it tends to rub off that glue and you do have squiggle marks. So especially with dark paper. So there you go, your cute little ornament. And this is gonna dry a lot lighter. So you've got another card made. Okay, we're on our last one guys, honestly. Okay, so this one, we're gonna use our star and we're just gonna build up. And this is going to be a landscape card. But whoop, doesn't matter now. We're going to do our red, green, and white plaid. And that goes up here in this corner. And you can see now why that white really popped out these green, these Christmas colors with the gingerbread. Yeah, so this one, you can always know if you're flipping it the wrong way is if the patterns are all gonna, you're gonna have a repeat of a pattern, you don't want that. So it's almost like a foolproof way because you think, wait a second, this shouldn't go this way. So I'm putting glue. You're almost putting glue on the next pattern. And like I said, guys, this is really super fast and quick. When, you're, when you know the cutting measurement, we're just having some, some fun time here. Spending a little time together. I wish you were actually here talking to me too. Okay, so... We've got that, so, oop, it moved on me there. That's where you got the wiggle room. Okay. Okay, and this is going to go on to, I think this one we're gonna do this way because our last portrait one, I, um, we had these two at the bottom, and I just wanted to show you how can, you can really change the, change it up and we're going to put it on the top this time so we'll put it on the top so we'll put some glue and we're safe to put it up around the whole edge here okay and then we're going to put that right 
on nice 1 8 inch border okay and then we're going to we're going to put the icing to my gingerbread and we're going to put the star there so remember we can just glue this one straight down onto the paper Uh, why don't we just do it right on that edge there and then we're gonna put our star on there and we're gonna do that with and we don't since we have the sentiment decorating the front of the card we're not gonna put ribbon on this one we just did it on the ones that the sentiment because I wanted the sentiment so you want to cover up that white actually I think what I'm gonna do is trim off a tad bit of this. There you go. That way our star is going to fit on there. I want to cover up the white, but I want the star to fit on there. Okay, so there we've got that one and the inside I've already did and I now I will note on this stamp set you have four different images to, um, or four different dies that actually are standalone. Like this is a standalone die set practically. And I love sets that have like four or three of something because I know I can do a lot of fun like trios of core cards or quartets of cards. Now this one is funny because it does not have a stamp for this star. Little stinkers stamping up, boo. But, um, so I just went ahead and stuck our little ornament on there. And then I just put the wishing you a Merry Christmas in red. And then that just, you know, kind of decorates the inside there. But I do wish that there was a star in there. I mean, come on. Why have the die cut? You know, and you know, the paper that goes with this, um, gingerbread and peppermint has designer series paper that cuts out all those images. Now, the reason why I use the Trimming the Town designer series paper is because the designer series paper that comes with um, the gingerbread set, a lot of them, a lot of them have the images that can be cut out. And so I didn't wanna use these pieces because I wanted to save them to actually cut out. So that's why I ended up using this trimming the town here. So you've got another card. So there we go. We've got our four cards there. And I might play around a little bit with, um, oh, I didn't put that in there. I didn't glue that in there. I might play around with uh, maybe putting a little more of something on um, some of these cards. So I'll entice you to jump over to my blog and see if I end up coming up with some more funsies. Okay, Let's see if I can get that on there. Okay, so there we go. We have four cards that we made using that technique and using all the gingerbread. And like I said, normally I wouldn't have thought these colors would go with the gingerbread color, but because I kinda, oh, that's just, we, we won't look there. Oh, don't look there. Okay, so we've got these four cards we've made and then this group of cards I made using our current perfectly plaid stamp set with the pine tree punch. And so let me just tell you real quickly again, what we did is we just took simply, if you're making the one that has a border on it, you're gonna use these measurements. And then if you're making now, how can I get this here? Get this picked up with my hand here without spilling all of these pieces. If you're making the template with the Christmas trees, you're gonna use five and a quarter by four. But when you're making this card, it's three and three quarters by five. So this is the template you use when you have a border. And this, is the template that you're using whenever you're making without a border. So you have two different templates here and I'll have those on my website. And literally all you're doing is stacking four pieces, cutting them, 
cut at two and three quarters and then three and then two inches here. And then all you do is shuffle, shuffle them. So what we did is we ended up cutting these, make sure we keep them together. So we ended up cutting, like if you put these together in a puzzle, and then what you do is you pick up this pile and you just shuffle one. I don't know what I did here. I must have, let's pretend that piece is the right size. <laughs> I must have pulled it or something. Oh, it must have not been the same um, measurement, okay. So then we shuffle down two, and then we shuffle three, one, two, three. And really you're just shuffling them until you get a pattern. And then your first card will be these pieces. And then you don't even have to think on the next card because the next card is going to be these pieces. What did I do here? Anyhow, I messed them all up. So, <laughs> okay. I already showed it to you, but I was gonna repeat what I said, but then I got them all messed up. So, whatever. There you go. So, I hope you try this technique. It is really fun. I'm calling it the stack, cut, and shuffle. And thanks again to Really Robin Stamps. If you have any questions, please give me a call or a text at 724-323-2296. Or you can email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. Subscribe to my blog. I like to post Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, YouTube video on Wednesday. So subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll be notified when I um, do a video and you'll also be notified when I have a blog post. Thanks for buzzing by friends.